Alrighty. Uh, so this is the Marin Wildfire Prevention Authority Operations Committee uh, meeting for Thursday, December 3rd at 3 p.m. Uh, for those joining by phone, use star nine to raise your hand and star six to mute or unmute. This will be a virtual meeting uh, pursuant to the executive order N29-20 by the state of California. Uh, we'll call the meeting to order at 3.06 p.m. And we'll start with a roll call. I can get it. I'm just checking mine. Yeah. Oh, okay. Perfect. If you do that. All righty. We'll get started with the roll call. Nevada Fire District. Aye. City of Santa Fe. I see Darren there. Just wave. <laughs> Sorry, I was muted. No problem. Uh, County Marin, I'm here. Uh, Southern Marin Fire District. Chief Welch in place of Chief Tubbs, gotcha. Uh, City of Mill Valley. Here. Town of San Anselmo. City of Larkspur. Here. City of Corda, Town of Corda Madera. Here. Fairfax. Sorry, here. Kento Fire District. Yep, here. Marinwood CSD. Here. Hope the tooth's doing okay, Eric. Oh boy, oh boy. I, I won't be saying much today. <laughs> uh, uh, Town of Ross. Here. Sleepy Hollow Fire District. Here. Bolinas Fire District. Here. Uh, Stinson Beach, did Kenny make it on? No, I don't think he's going to make it, Jason. Okay, I thought so. And then uh, Inverness Fire District? Here. And Muir Beach. And again, if uh, for any of the, the panelists or board members, committee members uh, that have come in as attendees, if you just raise your hand, we will, uh, we will move you over um, to a panelist. So uh, first item, any agenda adjustments from the committee members? Seeing none, we'll move on. Open time for public expression. Uh, the public's welcome to address the operations committee. Uh, you'll have three minutes to do so. We ask that you limit this to items that are not on the agenda and that items that are on the agenda you address during the subsequent time that they're on the agenda. So any participants in the meeting Please raise your hand or hit star nine if uh, if you're uh, on the telephone. All righty, seeing no hands up, uh, we'll move on uh, to number five, uh, the executive officer's report, uh, Mark Brown. Good afternoon, and I'll make this uh, as brief as possible. Um, Today we had a, a really um, successful executive committee meeting. And one of the things that we're doing with the executive committee meetings is using that to guide uh, budget, or excuse me, agenda preparation for um, our board meeting that's coming up in two weeks. And one of the items that was included in today's was um, the product of some work I had with some of you folks. And so I appreciate that. And that is uh, position description for a planning and program manager and the ability to move that forward and um, hire that position within the MWPA so that when you guys make your nice aggressive uh, ops committee uh, core project work plan that we'll have someone that'll be able to help manage that and push those projects through. Uh, received excellent feedback on that position today. Um, we also included in today's uh, meeting um, planning for a board retreat that we're looking at doing in January, which will be um, done remotely, but it's going to help um, build some cohesion amongst the board members and also guide our strategic uh, planning to, um, to help the ops committee to be able to know what direction we really want to go as an organization. We also have the finance committee that's been up and running. We have a meeting coming up um, to make mid-year budget adjustments and also to uh, final review of six draft um, budget or uh, financial policies. One of them is very um, near and dear to all of you. 
disbursement calls for uh, space valuations and um, um, mitigation projects. So uh, the Finance Committee will review that uh, Tuesday so that we can include it into the December 17th board meeting so that it can be approved prior to the end of the year and you all know when um, MWPA funds will be uh, streaming into your accounts. At our first Citizens Oversight Committee meeting on Tuesday, uh, two days ago in the evening, and uh, that went very well. Uh, we have nine very um, well-engaged members, many of them who were instrumental in creating um, the MWPA. And just a side note, uh, the grand jury that wrote the report, Wildfire Prepared Us, a new approach, uh, did receive a statewide award for excellent reporting. And finally, the um, environmental review. We had our memo from Remy Moose Manley regarding CEQA compliance and um, some of the challenges we have or may not have moving forward. We have a subcommittee that is working on refining that direction from Remy Moose Manley, and that will guide our um, RFP development for an environmental firm so that we, that way we can bring on an environmental firm and the projects that you folks put together as part of your uh, work plan. Uh, any of the core projects that, that that firm would be that require compliance, that firm would be doing that compliance for us. And I'm open to any questions. Any questions for Mark from the... Hi, Mark, this is Bill. I have a question about the retreat that they're talking about. Um, uh, is it gonna be a in-person retreat or are they doing a, okay. And then um, are we supposed to contribute in some way or prepare items for the retreat? And for example, um, you know, recommendations on strategy or on, you know, X, Y, Z. Um, and just so people um, who may not have been watching the screen, no, it's not gonna be an in-person retreat. We're gonna use Zoom and have breakout rooms within Zoom. Um, as far as, um, the ops committee providing any feedback, I ask that you just funnel that either through me or into to your um, appropriate board member as we develop the package for that. Thank you. Any other questions for Mark? Any questions, uh, or I should say any questions, any comments from the public? Not seeing any, we'll move on. Thank you, Mark. Uh, yep. Moving on to item number six, the consent calendar. The, yes. Oh, did we have somebody with their hand up and I missed it? Stephen Keys, did you have your hand up? We'll catch you on the next one if, if you did. <laughs> yes. Sorry. He is. Hello, folks. Um, I thought I heard that something said during the executive committee meeting that the ops committee would be participating in the retreat. Um, I didn't quite understand what that meant, but uh, this is a question I guess from Mark. Uh, are you expecting the uh, ops committee people to be present and participate? No, it's just a board retreat with the executive officer. Thanks. Alrighty, um, moving on to uh, the consent calendar, item six. Uh, the only item on the consent calendar is the uh, minutes from the September 24th meeting. Uh, so unless if anybody has any changes uh, or, or conflicts on there, I'd ask that we make a motion to uh, approve the consent calendar all at once. Motion to accept consent calendar. Second. Alrighty, so I've got Bill as a first, and who is the second? Alrighty, wow. Alan. Perfect, thank you. Uh, two, we'll uh, open it up to any public comment on the consent calendar. Coming back to the committee, seeing none, coming back to the committee for any discussion, seeing none, we'll, uh, we'll take a roll call here um, for approval of the consent calendar. Nevada Fire? Aye. Danerfell? Aye. County of Marin, aye. Southern Marin Fire. Stain. City of Mill Valley. Yes. Town of San Selmo. Yep. City of Larkspur. 
Yes. Town of Corte Madera. Yes. Town of Larks, uh, Fairfax. Yes. Kenfield Fire District. Yes. Marinwood CSD. Yes. Town of Ross. Yes. Leapy Hollow. Yes. Bolinas. Yes. Stinson's not present. Inverness. Aye. And Muir Beach. All righty. So we have uh, two non present, one abstention. The motion passes. The consent calendar is approved. Moving on to item number seven old business, uh, the evacuation plan study. So, um, as everyone is intimately familiar with, one of our key goals here uh, early in the MWPA is creating a document that can help provide, uh, you know, a guide for us in the prioritization of work for the MWPA, specifically around evacuation routes um, and, and getting people out alive. Uh, we have worked with uh, consultant Charlotte Jourdain um, to develop and draft the, the, um, the, the RFP, RFQ, and I think the reason we're, we're doing it as, a, as a, a duo there is that we're gonna to need to have some discussion with the contractor or contractors that ultimately end up providing the product. Uh, so this went out uh, yesterday as part of the, the package. So I know all of you haven't had a ton of time to get your eyes on it, but uh, I would ask that uh, in relatively short order, um, you draw your attention to it and specifically the deliverables um, legals looking at the context from the, the framework of the RFP, RFQ, um, and uh, the, the milestone section and what we're trying to achieve. Uh, in order to get this in front of the MWPA board for their December 17th meeting, Mark needs it by the 10th of this month. Um, so we can make changes up too, but obviously would prefer you know, having your feedback by by the seventh or so to give us a little time to make any adjustments. So I, I won't get into the, the details of it because it's included in the, in the, the packet, um, but I would open it up for any questions um, and we can bring Charlotte in uh, and Mark will have some input here. Go ahead, Mark. Yeah, Jason, um, a, a significant change on the timeline. The executive committee would like to be able to review um, the RFP prior to going to the board of directors. So that would push um, and it give you a little bit more time to get feedback from your committee, but uh, it would be the first Thursday in January where we would review at the exec committee level and then bring it forward to the board of directors. Okay, so we have hey, a little more time. Hey, Jason, just one quick thing. I skimmed through it. The, looking at the schedule, it has December of 2021 and then it goes on to you know, February, March, I think it probably needs to read, I'm assuming 2020 December uh, schedule order in 2021 on the RFP where it's highlighted with schedule. Yeah, I have a release date of December 21st, 2020, which will obviously change based on what Mark's telling us with the executive committee. And yeah, then, the version I have just says 2021 on it. Okay, it's, it's probably because of uh, uh, me. <laughs> and well, sending out the I, I'm not I'm here I wasn't I wasn't interested in assigning blame just I just noticed that <laughs> so what I'll make sure is that w whatever draft is the newest is in front of all of you before okay. the day's end here um and then just would ask that gives us a little bit more time at the executive committee so I would say uh the operations committee should have any feedback by the end of the the, the month here in December uh and then we can push that to the executive committee does that give you time Mark Digging out the un unmute button. Let's. So I need to post the executive committee meeting on December thirty first. So then we have the Christmas week. So um, basically, I would say early in the week of Christmas, December twenty. So why don't we 21? just say yeah, or, yeah the twentieth of December. Why don't we just set a date here, the twentieth okay. of December, for any comments, feedback from the operations committee, and then we can take it from there. Um, you know, we'll have an opportunity to after the RFP RFQ comes back to sit down with the potential vendor or vendors, um, make sure they clearly understand what we're, what we're uh, attempting to get out of it. And one of the other pieces we're also talking about, because we wanna look at this as a, as a platform for decisions around uh, the work going forward, is there a, uh, an applicable application that could be more dynamic and used uh, 
you know, during an event to forecast, um, uh, you know, threat to communities, et cetera. So we'll, we'll be talking about including some language in there. Chief Tubbs was working on that um, this week. I have a question or a comment. Um, I'm not sure what version it is that it made it into the packet. I know I viewed it as a Google Doc to give uh, comments. Um, so it would be helpful in whenever it gets put into a, a packet to show a version date or something. Um, in order to expedite, rather than to have to go to the executive board and then to the full board, is it possible since it is a Google Doc and we're just a subcommittee that um, an executive board member or two could could look at it at the Google Doc level and make comments then, and we can expedite the process. I would hate to think anything that comes out of this group has to go to the executive board before it makes it to the full board. Mark, do you wanna answer that first? Yeah, I'll reach out to the executive um, committee members, Bill, and, and pass that suggestion along and see how, how, how it's received. And on my end, uh, I can, I, I definitely appreciate your suggestion about a version date. The version that is in your packets includes all the comments that were made on the Google um, doc that was sent out um, shortly before Thanksgiving. So thank you all for, for those comments. Um, the only thing that's changed between what's in your packets and the most recent is this change of date due to now being pushed back to, the, to January. So um, that's why there was a little bit of confusion around the dates. But um, all the other substantive comments um, were, in, were um, in, included in, um, in the language. And Thank you, Charlotte. Comments that came from our work group. Uh, Garrett, do you have? Sorry. Uh, yeah, Chief. So is it better that we give you our comments in writing or just off a quick skim? I have a couple of maybe questions, maybe comments. Is that easier? We can certainly take those verbally now. Charlotte is on and I think um, has been using the Google Google tool to track this. So uh, I'll, I'll leave it to her as to how she wants the, the documents. And then I think anything you can bring up now is, is fine. Um, so the group can hear it and move forward. Okay. Okay. Just quickly, quick scam. I see there's training. Um, maybe in act, the actual document, right? A little maybe more specificity in terms of and I don't know if you can, training schedules, number of people to be trained, what's the expectation, whether it's someone from every agency or however you wanna do that. It just seemed not as detailed for training. And then the question I had is, when this thing's up and running, is there an expectation the firm will be around or if you have a maintenance contract for a year or something so they could work out all the glitches that are probably gonna happen? With the document and that wasn't too clear to me either if there was some provision for that where they at least provide a cost or include it or something hourly rate or whatever to to deal with all that's that's going to happen i'm pretty sure with this software so um can i address that real quick i think that um it's not it's not specified in the proposal at the moment but i would actually recommend that we consider specifying um, a subscription service for this, right? Rather than um, the purchasing of a software that would require a maintenance plan. If we have a subscription platform, then we're sure that somebody's always there to maintain it and to help out through it. Um, it also um, would help a little bit. Be this, this project started a little bit as more of a risk assessment um, that was gonna be virtual, but now we're actually talking about a true evacuation management software. And so um, it, it would help clarify that this is not, we're not trying to pro procure a product only, a software product only. We're actually trying to procure um, professional services that would use a virtual platform to enable um, what we're trying to do, but we, we actually need a consultant to help us through evaluating and compiling all the data that is needed to properly um, analyze evacuation risk. I think, yeah, we were looking originally, I think, at a at a static one time snapshot that would help assess for us. Um, what we're trying to build in is the ability to look at metrics. So when we make adjustments and modifications, either through a traffic or vegetation management, that we're able to capture the results and really be able to show progress. Um, and then also looking at the, the, the host of things that are out there 
um, you know, making this also a dynamic tool. So during an event, um, we, we could use it uh, for pr fire prediction modeling or other things. Um, it, it may not be very much more expensive at all to do that. And uh, so this is where it's turned into kind of a, a static staff shot to help, you know, plan out our, our work plans, but on the same token may have some, some, some use in the, the dynamic world. Yeah, and then um, regarding the, uh, the training schedule and so on, um, this is something I added, Jason, after uh, we last spoke. I just wanted to make sure that one of the milestone included um, sort of, um, you know, hand, hand off of the, of the product. And I wanted to make sure that the consultant knew that we would expect some um, proper training. Um, I put formal training with fire and possibly law enforcement and proper documentation of all of the software applications feature and capabilities. Um, so that's in terms of um, hand handover of the product or the project when it's finished. But there's also mention in here, and I realize now that it might be confusing. There's also the mention of a training mode, meaning that the it was requested that the um, the application be um, be able to to help conduct tr evacuation training simply. Thanks, Charlotte. So I, I think if everybody can get their eyes on this, we've got a little bit of extra time. Um, ask any questions. I will make sure we share with the group Charlotte's contact information. And then I assume Charlotte would prefer comments be used on the Google Sheet. So that can be yeah. tracked if she doesn't have a ton of PDFs. Is that correct, Charlotte? Yes, I can send out the, the link um, if that works for everyone. It's also... Um, a lot easier for if it's a more of a structural comment. If you want to give me a call or send me an email um, to, to let me know what your intentions are, and I can build that through the language instead of you having to insert comments at various uh, points in different paragraphs and so on. If you want to give it more of a direction one way or another, um, I can do the, the writing for you. So feel free to contact me directly for that. It's no problem. And I'm working off memory here. We have a subgroup that's been working on this. Um, and uh, I think it, I'm forgetting who it included it all right in front of me, but I think Chief Tyler, Tubbs, um, Todd Cusimano, I believe, and uh, George Krakauer. There you go. Thank you for raising your hands because I can't quite remember. So also, uh, if you need background on how we got to where we're at, feel free to reach out to any one of them. Um, Jason, on, on, I would like to add one thing. Um, regardless of the date that this will finally get approved, um, we should really start thinking about um, how we're going to um, promote, the, promote this and invite people to respond. So if the committee has any suggestion in terms of um, consultants or organizations that they know might be interested in responding, um, I would gladly welcome those, those um, names and contact information as well if you have them so I can start building a list so we make sure we get good responses. And I think you mentioned earlier, Jason, that um, we might um, discuss with some of the consultants um, what, you know, the, the content of this, just to make sure that there is no um, blatant challenges to responding, no, no major obstacles, um, you know, just to make sure that we get um, quality, quality responses. All righty, any other discussion from the committee? Any comments from the public? Going to public comment? Seeing none. All righty, this item doesn't require any action from the committee. This is informational in nature. Uh, so we look forward to your input on this as we move forward. This is one of the big milestones uh, in, in this year one and, and the work plan. So it's exciting to see the RFP drafted and uh, moving forward. Moving on to uh, item B of old business, the community wildfire protection plan. We invited Christy Neal um, and I see she also has Tammy from STI on. And I think that's why Tammy's on. Um, but anyway, just to provide an update to the committee on the Community Wildfire Protection Plan, which if you recall was adopted in 2016 
um, and uh, just just went through a kind of a large overhaul, um, if you will, uh, with Christie's leadership. And I'd be remiss if I did not take this opportunity uh, to thank Christy. She's uh, prior to coming to Marin County Fire, Christy was with federal fire agencies for 30 years. Um, and we gladly stole her and she promised five years and that five years is up, uh, which makes me want to cry. But um, Christy has been instrumental in not only getting the first draft of the CWPP put together uh, and published and, and adopted, but also this rewrite. So Christy, I personally thank you for the service and the contributions you've made to Marin County. Um, this was one of the pillars of the work we did associated with MWPA and, and really a driving force and the need um, uh, to, to bring this to reality and, and wildfire prevention. So with that, um, I will turn it over and, and bring Tammy over as a, uh, as a uh, panelist. Okay, great. I have uh, a slideshow here that I'll run through a lot of people because it actually has some of the results of the modeling. So I think it'll be enlightening for folks. And so thanks, Christy Neal, Marin County uh, Fire. And I've been here six years, Jason. And um, so it's been great. Um, so I'll run through this pretty quick and hopefully uh, my bandwidth doesn't crash this thing. So uh, probably the biggest thing to understand is that um, we're working through this refresh project. Uh, the project funding for this came from Marin County Fire Department and the biggest chunk came from a FEMA grant that the county acquired to work on the county hazard mitigation plan. And so this document will feed the county hazard mitigation plan as it relates to fire hazard. Uh, just to remind everyone some of the benefits of the CWPP, we've certainly seen and experienced an increase in community uh, collaboration with the fire agencies for sure. Uh, the biggest item is that this CWPP is required um, to be eligible for federal and state grants and was one of the drivers years ago when we did the first one to uh, make sure that we could apply for federal and state grants because that's the only money we were able to access. And again, this will feed the county hazard mitigation plan. Uh, many recent developments and accomplishments have led us to this update and the refresh. Um, since 2017, there's been a huge emphasis on emergency preparedness, as you know. Um, the fire agencies have been uh, carrying a lot of that load. We know that the 2017 Board of Supervisors Lessons Learned document from the North Bay fires, the Civil Grand Jury Report, the uh, passage of Measure C and the formation of uh, the MWPA um, has generated the need to uh, refresh this document, uh, including there's been a ton of work, um, certainly tons of outreach and public education led by Fire Safe Marin, um, increased number of inspections throughout the county, defensible space inspections, uh, a huge increase in our FireWise communities and a huge increase in our outreach and training that's focused on home hardening, defensible space, and fire smart plants. And then certainly there's been a few local level hazard assessments, and then certainly the development of the MWPA priorities. So the only requirements of a CWPP are collaboration, prioritized fuel reduction, and treatment of structure ignitability. This document uh, goes well beyond that. It's um, a science-based document and I would be remiss in um, acknowledging we've had a great partnership with Sonoma Technology Incorporated with Tammy Lebedso um, being the project lead and, and uh, the, the professional services contract that we have with that company to do this work otherwise. Um, you won't see any other CWPPs in the state that look anything like this. So it's, uh, I think it's pretty high tech. Some of the key work products and the status uh, to date. So we've refreshed the document and it's out currently for uh, public review. Uh, it's been sent out to um, a variety of groups, the county, 
CDA's office, Fire Safe Marin, Firewise Communities, the MWPA organization, um, fire chiefs, fire agencies, land management agencies. And so it's out for review. I should also mention Marine Conservation League. So we really are asking for your feedback and review. Uh, if you don't have the link to uh, look at the document, please send me an email and we'll get it to you. Uh, we, we have that review up until December 10th. Um, but the document, basically the entire document has been somewhat refreshed. Um, all the all the sections have been updated based on not only stakeholder feedback, but updates to any data that we had. Um, a big update on the countywide fuels map. Um, we did a, a full redo of the science-based fire hazard assessment, which uh, took into account uh, addressing fire behavior potential in the wildlands, as well as communities and the populated areas. And the biggest thing is that it's really starting to address the parcel level fire threat to structures and their ignitability. That's probably the biggest uh, change in, in this uh, refresh document. And then there'll be, there are some updates to the recommendations in the action plan and a an updated list of priority projects. So the updated fuels map um, basically um, you know, we needed to have that so that we could better represent uh, landscape fire behavior and the potential of, fi of fires in Marin and um, assess the fire hazard. So a little bit about that fuels map because this was a, a, big, a big deal was um, in 2019, the county uh, was mapped, updated that there was a vegetation map um, sponsored by the Golden Gate Parks uh, National Park Conservancy Group, where we took the life form vegetation classes for the ground fuels and the LIDAR data for the canopy characteristics to crosswalk the vegetation into fuel models so that we could uh, run the fire behavior model. And um, secondly, the we also calibrated, there's some ground truthing through the data quality control that STI performed as well as they went through a good calibration based on the, some of the fire behavior that we saw on the Woodward fire this summer. So we feel like it's uh, pretty well calibrated. The county level of fire hazard assessment basically um, identifies areas with the greatest likelihood of burning given an ignition and it helps us establish priority areas. It can also support the decisions uh, about where to implement fire hazard reduction projects and certainly support any tactical and staffing decisions that fire agencies might have. So something different from the previous document in terms of the, the county level fire hazard assessment is that we are utilizing a map of structure density um, to uh, assess the hazard in the county. And so, as you can see the steps one through five, the STI prepared a structure density map. We brought in the vegetation and fuel model data uh, utilized local weather and fuel moisture data from our ROS stations. Uh, we analyzed three weather scenarios, kind of the average fire season, more like the 50th percentile weather data that happens mostly 50% of the time. We added a peak fire condition, which uh, in the last document was more like the extreme. And then we added the Diablo wind event uh, conditions very similar to what we have seen in the 2017 fires, as well as what we get typically in late summer and fall in Marin. So perform that fire behavior modeling and then develop the composite map of the potential fire behavior uh, with structure density. And we'll show you a couple of those uh, layers. So here's uh, preliminary results of that analysis uh, for the peak fire conditions. Um, I think it's important to note that those red areas are really flame lengths greater than four feet, um, four to 11 feet basically, and rates of spread 20 to 60 foot per minute. And 
structure density in those red areas is one to 50 structures per 40 acres. And so I know many of you know anything greater than four foot flame lengths really starts to indicate difficulty for us in suppressing, suppressing fires, at least through direct attack methods. Um, where we see certainly aircraft and dozers equipment needed when we get into those kinds of conditions. So here is the uh, Diablo wind condition, the, the results from that um, north northeast wind um, that occurs uh, several times uh, in the late fall or late summer, early fall uh, in Marin. So, and understanding that it's a, it's a composite map, so it's got rates of spread, rates of spread, flame lengths, and uh, structure density. So moving on to the parcel level fire hazard assessment, um, this is the the kind of the newest, the newest part of the document, or at least the the most different than the past. And um, basically, we brought in all the parcel maps and from the assessor records, which included year built, the total perimeter of the structure, uh, prepared that building footprint and mapped an ignition zone buffer, which is about 200 feet around each structure, utilized the local weather and fuel moisture data again and performed the fire behavior modeling rates of spread, burn probability. And um, again, it's, uh, the results is basically a composite map of the potential fire hazard and threat to structures. So here's a here's a, an example of the parcel level hazard results. Um, and one, two, and three, one basically represents um, low threat, two moderate, and three high. And uh, you can look at, if you look at the CWPP, there's much more specifics about uh, some of the, the details related to how those parcels um, ranked out. And then here's, a, here's kind of a community level result um, where you can look at, drill down into the communities and uh, kind of get an idea of what the threat from burnable vegetation to a structure might be. So this is the, the biggest whiz bang part of this, this uh, document that I think um, will be impactful to uh, agencies and the public. So some of the other actions related to the update, um, we've uh, solicited comments certainly from all the stakeholders, all the groups um, updated the project priority list um, from the current Appendix B of the CWPP. And then there will be, um, I sent out to the fire chiefs an online interactive um, map link today if you wanna go look at that parcel level information. And then um, again, all the sections have been updated to uh, address specific issues. Um, and a, a lot of new things, invasive species, environmental considerations, climate change, those kinds of things. And then we also brought in the uh, collector application, some of the inspection data that's occurred in the county over the last couple of years. And then there's some updates to the mitigation recommendations and accomplishments based on the accomplishments. So I know this is kind of small, but here's an example of the updated list of priority projects. And then here's um, a really great start to trying to map all the wood roofing structures with wood roofs in uh, Marin. And so utilizing uh, the clips widely used in the fire service and it was very helpful with defensible space and uh, post fire damage um, assessments. That's where we got this data from about 10,000 inspections done this summer. But um, so it's a, a good start in trying to see where we have some potential work or at least residents uh, do for roof types. And then STI, uh, Tammy just told me today that they're overlaying this with some of the parcel level hazard assessment uh, results and we'll see what that tells us. 
So section eight, if I, you know, I'm really important to have um, at least the fire chiefs, if you guys could take a look at this section, uh, section eight and nine to uh, review some of the mitigation measures. Um, these things are pretty familiar to most of you, public and community outreach, preparedness planning, defensible space, veg management, non-residential veg management, and then certainly evacuation planning and preparation. And then section nine, the recommendations are uh, still the same as the previous document and a lot of continuing on uh, would be added to that, you know, continuing to improve defensible space, uh, continuing to evaluate wildland fire hazards and supporting wildfire protection planning, et cetera. So those are very similar and are the same as the previous 2016 document. So in terms of the schedule, um, we've been working on this for the last couple months. Uh, STI gave us a draft uh, the week of Thanksgiving. So that's been posted for uh, review and we're hoping those comments or get some comments by the middle of next week so that we can wrap up um, the actual document and then STI will release a story map that'll have an online presentation of the CWPP executive summary, as well as you'll be able to drill in with the, all the interactive maps and hoping that's done by um, around December 18th. And then uh, beyond that, um, beyond that, basically in February is the start of the county hazard mitigation planning some of the risk specific public meetings and so February 2nd will be a public meeting open to um, the entire county and have some feedback about these results this plan and um, what the hazards are as it relates to wildland fire in the county and then there'll be additional meetings related to flooding and other hazards uh, related to the hazard mitigation plan. And then sometime in the, the spring, I know uh, Chief Weber wanted to have the Board of Supervisors um, adopt the, the plan again. So that's kind of where we're at and open for any questions and or discussion. And um, Tammy's on too, so she can answer the hard questions um, about the modeling and the analysis. So um, that's all I got. Thanks, Christy. If you can uh, stop sharing, then we'll see everybody again, just because I can't figure it out otherwise. Um, and, you know, I'll just start with thanking Christy um, for the work on this. You can see the horsepower behind this document and the data that's in there. Much of this will be used to inform uh, our study, the evacuation study, and I think it'll actually be a huge cost savings uh, because a lot of this work has already been done and the data exists there in GIS. And then, uh, you know, a big thanks to Tammy and Sonoma Technology Inc. Who, you know, looking at CWPPs across the country, I have never seen one that that is this data driven um, and and of this caliber. So, you know, I think kudos to Christy and Tammy and the folks at Sonoma Technology Inc. for for bringing this and putting it in front of us. And it's just a great tool to help inform our decisions um, on a science based and. Again, I'll thank you, Christy, for your six years of service. Um, and, and you're certainly willing, willing to extend that. <laughs> uh, and I'll open up to the group for any comments or questions. Um, this is Bill Tyler. Um, excellent work, uh, Christy and Tammy and the team and to everyone that contributed. Thank you so much uh, for this update. It's fantastic, I think. Um, I got a, a couple quick comments and then a question. So um, for the public that um, isn't familiar with the original CWPP, uh, this one, this update and the existing 2016 version has um, an annual reporting requirement where all of the fire agencies report out on uh, the recommendations um, and any projects that were completed. And so that is uh, presented uh, and contributed to by the different fire agencies. And that's available if you're interested to, to see that. Um, I know the CWPP is adopted by the, or at least it's being recommended to be adopted by the Board of Supervisors in the spring. 
Um, should other local agencies consider adopting it as well? Uh, that's my question. And uh, I'm also curious if CAL FIRE has commented or looked at this because I know CAL FIRE is interested at least in local, uh, making comments to local hazard mitigation uh, plans uh, and updates. So I'm sure that they will respond to the county hazard mitigation plan, at least um, from a CAL FIRE standpoint. Uh, they have not seen this specific document. Um, we as Marin County Fire are required to develop a unit fire plan. And so essentially we take this CWPP, add the specific items that CAL FIRE requires of uh, Marin County Fire Department and roll it up so they have seen they've definitely seen the previous version whether uh local jurisdictions need to adopt the cwpp i guess um i don't have a feel for that uh, the last version was adopted by the board and um and i know we made lots of presentations to local jurisdictions so i i guess uh I don't think there's a need to. Um, it's a guiding document, so I guess it's up to up to the jurisdictions whether they want to do that or not. Someone else might have feedback on that. I I I don't know. I think it certainly presents an opportunity to bring it in front of boards and councils and and help them understand, you know, how we're making decisions and the science behind the decisions. Uh, but it's absolutely agency specific, and then. Historically, uh, we have adopted it at, at the level of the Board of Supervisors, and a lot of that has to do with our state contract with CAL FIRE and, and, and the Board's interest in wildfire prevention in general and their support. All right, any other committee comment before we go to public comment? Any public comment on this matter? Stephen Keys, let me uh, bring you over here. See if uh, I think I'm running solo now. I've got to try to figure this out myself. Um, Jason, if you want to make me co-host, I can support you. I'll have to do that here. I'm going to promote you, Stephen, to uh, panelist. You should be over. Stephen, the floor is yours. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Oh, great. Um, uh, Christy, this is fabulous. All of you have done magnificent jobs in past, and this is a, a, a great update. Uh, another reason for us to, for all people who live in Marin to be proud of our uh, excellent work and pioneering work. Um, a question I have is on the, uh, when you were showing the map uh, with the wooden roofs, uh, is that data that is strictly gathered by visual inspection or do you have any uh, mechanism of using um, uh, aerial photographs or anything like that to somehow or other uh, gather that information? And then this sort of a second one is in the future, is there any way in which either Firewise communities or local groups can help gather some of that data and contribute it to the, to the uh, county database. Thank you. So the uh, roof data is collected during defensible space inspections. Um, and so we're collecting that every time we visit a home, roof type, siding, windows, all that kind of information is collected. Uh, and uh, secondly, uh, you know, I'm sure there's opportunities to uh, uh, have volunteers assist with some of the roof data. Um, and uh, we just have to figure out a process to do that. I think it goes well with a defensible space inspection evaluation uh, done by inspectors um, or evaluators, but um, I'm certain that uh, we would take all the help we could get to get additional data uh, and utilize some of the systems like the collector application that's pretty quick and easy to do that. So thank you. 
I would just say, and maybe Tammy can give a more technical answer. We tried to do that up in Novato. Um, we had all of our engines go out and sample different roof types because uh, they show up differently in, in different resolution aerial photography. Um, and we, at the end of the day, they, we weren't able to do a mass viewing of it and assign um, you know, correct uh, roof types. And maybe Tammy can say why, but we definitely tried to do that to save time. Yeah, Tammy can address it because we did, we were hoping maybe the LIDAR data could help us, but um, the uh, resolution or the, the, yeah, you can answer that. Yeah, so um, hi everyone. Thank you for the, the nice comments and compliments. Um, I, you know, the, the less techie answer is that the LIDAR data does not have the enough spectral information to be able to distinguish different roof types. That's one issue. The second issue is that um, if there's vegetation, you know, overhanging the roof, you, you won't be able to see the roof type anyway. And so um, I guess going to the point of, uh, is it possible to develop a database of, you know, an inventory of wood roofing? It is. I mean, if the inspections are happening on the ground, and you're collecting that information in a spreadsheet or you know some electronic way. All we need to be able to map it is an address and you know wood roof, yes or no. And it's it's actually very simple. Um, I think the biggest thing is you know how do you collect the data? Uh, but once once you have it, yeah, we can certainly start building a database of that. And that's also in one of the recommendations is that we actually. Uh, complete a full mapping of the county if possible. Fantastic. Well, thank you both. Anything else from the committee before we move on? And this was an informational item that does not require action. All righty, seeing none, and I've got now more people on than I have on one screen, so. Um, you may, if, if you're not getting my attention, physically raise your hand. Uh, so Christy and Tammy, thank you. I know you guys are both busy, so have a great day. Um, 7C, the program of work. So uh, instead of being duplicative, uh, Mark Brown provided at the November 19th board meeting, uh, item number seven covered a good deal of the work that's going on. Uh, the, the work continues, uh, it will continue through this winter. Um, you know, a sizable number of defensible and space inspections have been completed over the summertime as well as many of the local projects. A lot of local projects are still in process, uh, either you know, anywhere from environmental review through uh, uh, contractors uh, being acquired and hired um, to uh, uh, projects being scoped. So. That is ongoing. I would just ask if there's anything that the committee has besides that before we move on. All righty, seeing none, any public comment on that? Yeah, Jason, I see no public comment. Thanks, Mark. All righty, the, oh, excuse me. I've got these backwards. It was C. <laughs> can't follow my own agenda. Um, the 2021 program of work, which is for fiscal year 21-22, um, was item number C. And uh, from an update on, on, we have a subcommittee working on this item as well. And, and I'll just give the highlights. So we're still on C. I was covering uh, D before C. Um, so this is the, uh, the development of the process associated with our next work plan. And I think that you can see uh, by the work we're doing on the evacuation plan, but all of the data we already have in the CWPP, we can really start to make some informed decisions uh, about the work. So the vision uh, that the group is proposing is fire adapted communities. The approach is a house out approach. Um, the goals are one, to get people out alive, two, protect their homes and structures, and three, a neighborhood community approach. And there's quite a few things in those subgroups. Um, everything from you know, getting people out alive, focused on our alert and warning systems and evacuation routes, 
um, to the protecting the home and structure, defensible space, home hardening grants um, to three, you know, the neighborhood community approach is the larger scale projects like uh, evacuation routes and, and those corridors, uh, firewise communities, the holistic strategic approach concept, um, you know, organizing residents and engagement, home evaluations and chipper days. So those will be guiding principles as we move forward. Uh, some of the to do's uh, are one is to get the uh, technical advisory uh, committee on board and, and Chief Tyler is gonna be covering a little bit about that um, and the upcoming date we have scheduled for, for that. Then the timeline associated with the development of the work plan is the engagement with the technical advisory committee now current uh, the operations committee adopts the vision goals and structures of the work plan. Uh, January and February, the technical advisory uh, and local agencies meet within the five zones and develop the project and the priorities in those areas. Uh, March, this will return to the operations committee. Uh, and of course, these are subject to fluctuation. Uh, April, the work plan to the, the operations committee um, and then May final draft to the board. And some of that may change based on the board's need to adopt a work plan and a budget. Um, so those are, those are some key highlights. Uh, one of the items we'll be working on is to develop and identify the metrics and measurement tools used uh, to, to, to highlight our successes. Uh, working uh, on the chipper program and the timing associated with that. And again, the idea is that, you know, trying to get home evaluations done and then follow up with chipper days. Um, so there's some continuity to the work we're doing, meaning we're educating um, the public and then giving them the opportunity uh, to take advantage of chipper days after their home evaluations are complete. Uh, working with FireSafe Marin and MWPA on the responsibilities and the partnership. Um, and then uh, public information, uh, you know, making sure the public's aware of everything that's happening and that uh, they're seeing that the good work that's being done. So that that's what the subcommittee is working on right now. We'll take this into a, uh, a kind of a final draft and get it out to the, the larger uh, operations committee uh, in the next couple of weeks. And for those that are on the committee, is there anything you'd like to add to that All righty, so we are on track moving forward with the development of, of that, the, the process around the next work plan and then ultimately the development of that work plan. Uh, seeing nothing from the committee, we'll go to public comment. And I'm looking for any raised hands, Jason, and don't see any. All righty. And uh, now that we're on to D, which I already covered, I would again, uh, the interest of time direct people's attention to Mark's report that was in the board packet on November 19th, item number seven, that spoke to uh, the work that's in process and won't get into much detail there because there's a lot of other items that we've been covering, including the RFP, RFQ and, and other stuff from the ops committee. But all the agencies are working on their local projects, uh, either completed or, or are in process. And I think I already went and talked about open time there and all the rest of it. So we'll skip down and uh, move on to Rich with the FireSafe Marin uh, update. Thanks, Jason. I'm going to do a share screen if I could, please. So um, what you see here is the regular monthly report that we provide to the uh, full board every month. This is um, in your packet. This is draft because it kind of gets changed right up to the last minute because new things are happening all the time. Most of it is pretty self-explanatory, but there's just a couple of highlights from it that I wanted to bring to the attention of the group. Um, one of them has to do with the community workshops. That was one of our commitments that we would do one workshop for each of the five zones. It's obviously not gonna be practical to do that in person with COVID and so forth. So we do have a, a, a plan now how we wanna do these. We'll be doing these as webinars, each one is gonna be customized to each of the zones. We have a lot of content that we've already gotten from the webinars that we're doing. And by the time we do this probably next uh, May, 
we'll have that much more. And we've broken these down into little pieces that we think it can provide basic content for each of the five zones. But then this is a part I wanted to bring to you. We'll be reaching out to the agencies in each of the five zones for representation from their agency so that we can customize some of the material specifically for, we'll use Novato as an example for Novato. So we'll be reaching out to Chief Tyler to provide some staff who'd be want to participate in the Novato presentation that we're doing. And obviously the same idea for San Rafael and the different areas that are out there. Um, the basic content will be taken care of and we'll work with you on what you're looking for that. So I think it'll be very good. And people who are living in West Marin, for example, will be get something that's really built for them rather than just generically for a more urbanized area. Uh, the next one that I wanted to bring up was the wildfire mitigation specialist. Um, we are like everybody just thrilled with all the work they're doing and a lot of data that's being gathered. And I think there'll be more perhaps standardized electronic data collection in the future, which will be great. One of the things that we'd like to propose doing from FireSafe Marin is to send out a, um, excuse me, sorry, is to send out a um, survey to the fire inspectors to try to gather more information about what resources they would need from us that might help them. What kind of educational handout materials, what kind of training videos, et cetera. One of the things we've kicked around for some time is to create a generic video of what an inspection looks like. You know, when an inspector comes to your property, here's what they're gonna be doing, here's what they're looking for, here's the privacy concerns, here's what you're gonna get from them, here's the follow up on it. Just a generic thing so that people can know what the programs are all about. It may be a little bit different in each jurisdiction, but those principles are more or less the same. So I will be reaching out to the chiefs uh, with a draft of a survey like that to see if you like that. And I think there'd be some value. Obviously, you guys are probably interested in for your own use too, but that'll help us to customize some of the materials that we're producing. And then the uh, two more things to call your attention to. One is today was the last day of the chipper program which has just really been an amazing program, amazingly complicated, but I think very good. Um, as you heard earlier, we really would like to start pulling together planning meeting in early January so that we can get top on top of what this will look like next year to see if we wanna modify it. We're gonna have, we're preparing a very comprehensive, quite detailed report on everything we did this year and how it worked and we'll have that done um, hopefully by the end of the month, if not first week of January, that will give us uh, some guidance of what we did in the past. We'll have some recommendations for the future, but we're gonna need a lot of buy-in and support. There's a lot of moving parts if we want to expand this program. And then the last thing, obviously we don't wanna start chipping next July. We need to get the new program going probably sometime in April. So for the MWPA board, you can expect that there'll be uh, most likely uh, some kind of request to the board for mid-year funding so that program can get started in the very, very early spring and carry through its logical time that it takes to make it all happen. And then obviously, as we mentioned before, we want to try it in, tie it in with the D-space inspections wherever we can. Um, and uh, once again, I think this is a program that gets really huge amount of support and it's really, for most people, this is for them the real MWPA affecting their individual homes and their lives. So it's a good program. So the one last thing, I'm gonna do a different screen share for one second, is the last follow-up to the red flag warning project. So we had quite a few meetings with, rep with pretty broad representation on this. And through the, here we go, here we go. Through the course of those meetings, um, we sort of moved away from the small A-frame signs for individual firewise sites and such. We still believe there's some value to that, but the big focus became replacing the flip signs that were purchased by um, FireSafe Marin, and in some cases, I think Mill Valley bought some whatnot years ago, many of which need to be replaced. There are high visibility signs that are put out in thoroughfares to get a lot of traffic, so they make good sense. So what you're looking at over here, this red flag warning today is the color and the signage and the language and 
font style that everybody plans to adopt as the basic look for a red flag warning today's sign. This is a sign that's been flipped open. Most of the time it's gonna be in a closed position. When it's in a closed position, it's gonna look something like this. So there'll be um, acknowledgement that MWPA paid for the thing and Fire Safe Marin for getting uh, additional information about things. But if you notice a big feature, and you can see this over here, we're gonna have a slot that you can slide changing messaging into them. So there'll be a generic message. If you chose not to do anything at all, there'll be a generic message that'll be there for all of them. But if you wanna add something new, there'll be channels on the side, you know, check your smoke detectors or, you know, register for this, or this is coming up, whatever you think is important. And that's what people are gonna see most of the time when they're driving around, they'll get used to that. This is very high visibility, signs can all be locked. And then um, each jurisdiction can decide what the best way they want to use to uh, open them. So right now, it was really hard to find somebody to manufacture these. Luckily, we got somebody here locally. And they are uh, in the process of making one single one as a template that we can show to everybody to make sure that's what people like. And then if that's what we all want to go for, then we can talk about going into more production and how they would get placed and so forth. So with that, I'm answer to, happy to answer any questions. Hey, Rich, uh, Tom Welcher, are they reflective? So you can see them at night with a little bit of light from headlights? They, they, should, they should be. Certainly when the red flag warning is up, that, uh, that will be. And then the, um, when you put it, the signs that you put in the slots, we were picturing color form, which is sort of like you see in the yard signs and things like that for political events. So I don't think those would be, they could be customized for that. But I think the warning part would really jump out at you. All righty, any other questions from the committee for Rich? Rich, thanks for all your work on this. Uh, opening it up to the public, any public comment on this item? Not seeing any raised hands, Jason. All righty, thank you. And this requires no action from the committee. We'll move on to new business. Uh, the advisory technical committee orientation. Chief Tyler, turn it over to you. Thank you, uh, Jason. Uh, may I use the screen share feature? I think as a panelist, you get to automatically. So absolutely. All right. Hopefully you all can see that. Um, basically what I'm showing you is just a draft agenda for the advisory technical committee meeting for their onboarding. Um, this will be a, a public meeting uh, via Zoom. Um, the date is December 10th, uh, 2020. The time is at uh, 0930 hours. Um, this will go out uh, as a public notice along with a copy of the agenda and, and packet. Um, for everyone prior to the meeting. Um, basically, we have a two hour window. Um, we were gonna really be moving through this, um, it, but if we stay with this agenda, um, this is what we were thinking uh, preliminarily with the group anyway. I welcome an introductions by uh, Jason, the chair, and then uh, uh, Mark Brown, the director. Um, we'd go over just the organization, the org chart, because the, the, technical, the advisory technical committee has not yet really been folded into all of the work that's been done. So many of the, um, the agency members that have been already identified and, and appointed, if you will, um, this will be the first time they've all gotten together, um, although they may interact in uh, other functions of their, their work. Um, so we're gonna just go over some of the org chart and the roster um, talk about agency versus uh, partners. Um, then we're gonna cover uh, a bit on the work plan, just give an update to where the existing work plan is, uh, and then spend about 20 minutes on what the focus and the goals are for the 2021-22, the which uh, again, that theme is the fire adaptive communities, uh, house out approach uh, with the goals that Jason had talked about earlier. Um, then, uh, and that's our, that is our recommendation basically to the, to the uh, full board as well. Um, then uh, if Christy is available, we're looking for a CWPP update, very similar to what she just gave this group. So everyone will be on the same page.
page and can point to that document as um, uh, a portion of why they're selecting the pro projects and programs that they are. Um, we'll be looking uh, to the um, executive chair, Bruce Goings, or his, uh, his designee to talk a little bit about the CEQA approach that the uh, MWPA is, is uh, taking and what the expectations are for environmental compliance prior to moving forward with certain aspects of uh, programs and projects. Uh, we'll be looking for um, ESP uh, representatives and subcommittees um, to share a bit about their role, their, the, the subcommittees that they've already created uh, that then will have full participation by the advisory technical committee members and how they can best work together. Um, then we're gonna uh, focus on uh, really future project development with the mindset of, of doing it by zone. Um, so, um, you know, how, how can the, the projects that are done by a city, town or fire district, um, you know, have extra, you know, synergistic effects, if you will, with, with other projects and, and thinking about projects in a zone and how they can help each other cross zone rather than what we're currently focused on mostly, which is by agency. Um, and then uh, we'll, we'll go over our proposed um, advisory technical committee schedule. Um, down here shows th those uh, technical committee members that have already been identified by agency, who they are. Um, this was the list that was submitted by each individual agency that was then uh, approved by the board. Um, take a look at this. Uh, some of the people that are on here may uh, be close to retirement or need to be changed. So be thinking about that if you're an agency about who you would, you would select. Um, and uh, then we also need to work on how to fold in those partners, partner member agencies that are, that are non-agency specific represented from the MWPA. Um, and then we'll have supporting documents uh, to share as well with the group. So um, this, this is just sort of a thumbnail uh, of what that day will look like. And then uh, Jason, as mentioned to you all uh, earlier, uh, what that schedule for building that work plan will, will actually be uh, as, it, as it steps up and moves towards uh, final adoption. Hey, Bill, uh, Jim Fox, quick correction. Steve Marcotte is with Bolinas Fire and not with Inverness Fire. All right, I'll make that change. Okay. Thank you. So, Jim, we'll just need representation, I think when at some point, we discussed Steve covering both on that committee. Oh, that may be it. Okay, that's that's fine. I'm not sure. So no, I, we can, yeah, that's, we can that's definitely fine. change it. So happy to answer whatever questions if anyone has. All righty. And the only thing that uh, on the welcome and introductions, we may want to add the board president uh, to that as I was looking at this. And then I don't know, uh, Dan is the vice chair, the input from the city manager group. So we just have some balance there. So somehow incorporate that in if that works for everybody. Will do. All righty. Uh, any comments from the public on this item? Not seeing any raised hands. All righty, moving on. New business B, chair and vice chair positions. So uh, at the, the onset of this, um, we selected uh, chair and vice chair uh, to serve for the first six months and, and end up off alignment with the board. Um, so there could be some transition and, and consistency, continuity. Um, it has been an absolute pleasure uh, to see this get kicked off and be a part of it. Um, and, uh, you know, I certainly have enjoyed working with Dan in the chair and vice chair position. I think that, you know, this group especially has, has worked so well together. Um, and if you look back at the last six months, it's, it's kind of crazy the accomplishments um, from, from getting off the ground to what we're looking at and the work being done uh, you know, I think a lot of people would question whether government could ever work this fast. So uh, kudos to all of you. Um, with that said, it, uh, it means that this is also probably my last meeting as chair. Um, and, uh, you know, I think the easiest thing for us to do today would take nominations. Um, and then uh, we can either do the election uh, now. Um, and Eric's probably looking at the bylaws that he did such a good job crafting. Um, 
and uh, or we can also just do the nominations today and take the vote and and transition the gavel at the first meeting of January. So uh, I, I don't think the bylaws uh, dictate which way we have to do it. Um, but uh, with that said, um, I guess I would I would open it up for discussion and any nominations. And I do have a nomination nominations uh, myself, but I'll uh, I'll let the good of the group speak first, and then then I'll go. Yeah. So this is uh, Todd. I, I I like how we have it. Um with the fire chief as the chair, we call him at the chair, right? Not the president. Yeah. So I, I would nominate uh, Chief Tyler as the chair. And if Dan is willing to continue as the uh, vice chair, I would nominate him as well to represent the managers. I second that unless somebody wants to throw out another slate. Right. Any other uh, nominations? And I, I think that's a, uh, a great, great suggestion. And Chief, I just want to thank you for all your work. You've been, uh, this whole team, but you've been outstanding. I just appreciate everything you've done. And I thought I'd give you a break and not nominate you for something, drive you into the ground. You can work on your next project. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to become, I'm going to grow up and become a city manager someday. <laughs> you should. It's Come fun. Come on out, baby. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> That's equally former police chiefs are allowed to do that. Dude. <laughs> Apparently, that's what I'm getting at. I'm seeing a theme uh, here. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. So we have a, a nomination, and I believe a second from um, Alan was on there with a second. There you are. You changed the location on my screen. Um, so we've got a first and a second. Uh, any uh, public comment before we come back to the board for a vote? I'm looking for any raised hands, and I don't see any. All righty. And does anybody have any hard feelings one way or another? This is such a collegial group about voting today or waiting until January. I think we should do it today. <laughs> Sounds good. So we have a first and a second. We'll, uh, we'll call the roll um, based on uh, Chief Tyler for a one-year term as the chair and Dan to continue as the vice chair uh, as allowed in the bylaws. And um, we have good balance on there between a fire chief and a city manager. And we'll, uh, we'll call the roll. Nevada Fire District. Do you, are you supposed to vote for yourself? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, I'll do it. Miss Climate. <laughs> you owe me, Jason. I'll do it. <laughs> uh, city of Santa Fe. Uh, I also uh, I endorse Chief Tyler and Mr. Schwartz as chair and vice chair. Awesome. Thank you. County Marin, I, I absolutely support this. Uh, Southern Marin Fire District? Oh, yes. Uh, City of Mill Valley. Hey, Jason, first I want to echo uh, the big thanks for your leadership uh, the last nine months. You've been uh, solid 100%. Uh, Bill and Dan, thanks for uh, uh, taking the gavel, and you have my 100% yes, amen. Yes, and amen. All righty. Uh, and I think uh, in some way, Dave had to step off. Uh, actually, I'm still here. I'm just waiting to vote. All righty. So Go ahead, absolutely. Sir. Echoing, echoing the appreciation, guys. Thanks so much. And yes. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, Larkspur. I'll vote yes, but Bill has to know that he has to keep making me look good as the vice chair. <laughs> <laughs> Todd uh, uh, Cordovanera. Yes. Uh, Fairfax. Oh, absolutely. And thanks to uh, you, Chief, all your work. And thanks to uh, Chief Tyler and Dan for continuing. And uh, Kentfield. Uh, yes, uh, absolutely. And, and thank you, Chief. And thank you, Bill, for, for doing it. Dan, doing a great job. And I just want to make a comment looking at the screen. I've never seen Kuzumano smile so much in the last five minutes, knowing that he wasn't getting into the position. <laughs> um, Rinwood. Uh, yeah, thank you, everybody. Uh, Tanner Ross. 
Absolutely. And once again, Chief, uh, incredible for the past year and year plus probably on everything you've done for this. And thanks for Bill and Dan for keeping it going forward. Absolutely. Uh, Sleepy Hollow. Rich, that's all right. Thumbs up works too. I can see you. Yeah. You yes. Okay. Thumbs up. Thank you. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Uh, Bolinas Fire. Yes, and uh, ditto. Thank you. Thanks, Bill and Jason, and Dan. And Stinson's not with us. Uh, Inverness. Yes, of course, and thanks. And Mir Beach isn't with us unless they've joined. So the motion passes unanimously with those present. Uh, thank you, Bill, for stepping up, Dan, for continuing. And uh, we are all here to support you. We're all behind you. We just won't tell you how much, how far behind, right? <laughs> all righty. Uh, it's good to work with everybody. This is a great group and uh, a lot of progress. Uh, any informational items uh, that the committee may have? And seeing none, we'll move on. Uh, committee, committee members, uh, number 10, committee members request for future agenda items. Already seeing none. And uh, in the interest of time, is there any public uh, comment on any of those last items uh, after the selection of the chair and vice chair before we adjourn? Looking for any raised hands and there are no raised hands. Awesome. So that takes us to number 11, adjournment. Um, I hope all of you have a happy and safe holiday season uh, in the midst of the crazy COVID world we live in. Um, and uh, with that, I'll, uh, I'll say we're adjourned and we can give a thumbs up and not do a roll call. So thank you, everybody. Thanks for being here. Yes, thanks, everyone.